is abortion the action we celebrated World Down Syndrome Day on Monday, March 21st, like we do every year. Persons with Down Syndrome, their parents, friends, and association supporting this unique but common syndrome came out to create awareness about the most common mutation known to mankind. Down Syndrome is a condition in which a baby is born with an extra chromosome, number 21. The extra chromosome is associated with delays in the child's mental and physical development, as well as an increased risk of health problems. The physical features and medical problems linked to Down syndrome can vary widely from child to child. While some kids need a lot of medical attention, others need healthy lives. Down syndrome also called trimazone 21, happens by chance. It can't be prevented, and it isn't caused by anything a parent did or didn't do. Unfortunately, the health problems can be managed well, especially when found early, and many resources are available to help kids and their families. In most cases of Down syndrome, a child gets an extra chromosome 21 from a total of 47 chromosomes instead of the regular 46. Rarely, the extra chromosome 21 attaches to another chromosome. This extra genetic material causes the physical features and developmental delays in people with Down syndrome. One in every 800 births is a child with Down syndrome. That is how common it is. The last time I heard, over 5.6 million people in the world live with Down syndrome. While people living with Down syndrome have different challenges, they can live a well meaningful life if they are supported and loved. However, in the pursuit to learn more about this syndrome, it was discovered that unborn babies who have Down syndrome have a thicker back neck than others who do not. Thus, you can tell whether or not the baby will be born with this ability or not. Subsequently, people on the medical profession began to advise mothers on the option of aborting these babies. The end result is that in some countries in the world, they have recorded close to 100% abortion of these babies. Appalling, right? Note that babies with autism are not aborted because autism cannot be detected in the womb. If it can, will that mean we will begin to give mothers the option to? When then will we say abortion is not the option? To celebrate this year's Down Syndrome Day, the governor of West Virginia in the United States signed a law that bans abortion of babies with Down Syndrome. If medical personnel are to preserve life, what moral justification then do they have to support the genocide of babies with Down Syndrome? Why do we make ourselves God over life? While having a child with Down syndrome may be challenging, having a child is challenging, and that does not stop her from procreating. So, is aborting babies with Down syndrome the option? Please share your thoughts. Mm -hmm. I, I have loads, but I'll let the gent speak first. <laughs> well, I just have one question. Oh. Um, who decides if a child should be aborted or not? I mean, if, if a mother wants to keep her child, mm -hmm. who gives um, the doctors or the government the right? Uh, so it's, not, a simple, it's not as simple as that. It, it really depends where you are to begin with, right? Are you in Nigeria? Are you in the UK? Are you in the US? Mm -hmm. Because each country has its own methodology for this, right? Well, let me ask the mother, I said. Hmm? 
Iceland. Let's add Denmark and Iceland. Denmark yes, and yes. Iceland. Okay. Uh, I mean, we, I, yes, let's talk about Denmark and Iceland. The fact that they've basically eradicated it through genetic engineering, being able to identify it early, very early in the, in the pregnancy, and a, a, a national campaign to screen it out. Are you serious? So, yes. so, so they purposefully went to screen it out. So now it's very rare for you to see someone in Down syndrome. You won't see any child with Down syndrome. You'll see um, uh, mostly adults with Down syndrome now because they weren't screened out in yeah, time. Yeah. It wasn't right? developed then. So um, the, how I know about this, there was a BBC documentary some, some about five, six years ago that was brilliant. And it, it kind of looked at that. There was a comedian that she did the documentary and um, she kind of went into detail with it. It was really, really good. So there's countries like that. Then you have less stricter countries, um, also like the UK. So if I tell you about my experience, when I was going for my tests, you know, while pregnant um, and knowing my age, once, once you're 35, you're classified as a geriatric mother or geriatric pregnancy, um, which I find hilarious. But... Um, they really, really want you to do the anomaly test, which is usually done around the 20-week mark. Um, and so every time I would come in, they would be asking me to do the anomaly test. And I would tell them, I don't want to do the anomaly test. And I would have to keep repeating myself. Because they'll say, but you know, with your age, you're at risk for issues with, with the fetus. And I, I understand that. But we're doing the scans, we're doing our blood work and the urine work and stuff. At the end of the day, whatever, I, whatever child I have is what God says I should have. And that was my attitude. But at some point, it became really overwhelming and extremely irritating. And I had to tell them to put in my file, in my notes, not to ask me again. And I had to be extremely firm about that. Because the, the, they are, how they're taught is that if you're a certain age, that's a check mark. Then if... if I had done the anomaly test and they did find Down syndrome, then the next conversation is pushing you to terminate. That is how it works. They're wow. not telling you, well, you know, termination is an option, but, you know, there are families, you know, people with Down syndrome can do this. Can, they're just pointing out the worst picture ever to you. And it's unfortunate. Now, whilst I believe it's a woman rights, woman's right to choose, um, at the end of the day, even though I am not for abortion, but I do believe that it's a woman's right to choose, yeah. you need to be able to make that decision with rounded information, with the truth, not with just one side. Yeah. Sure. You know, there needs to be a, a more of a conversation. You know, I, I know I'm dominating this, guys. But, you know, uh, no, 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 take I'm the floor. Take the floor. Take your floor. Take the floor. Take the floor. And I and I hold the medical community responsible for this. You know, people that educate doctors, nurses, I hold them responsible. People that create the literature, I hold them responsible. Absolutely. Because Down syndrome is like a tiny little portion in a module, a paragraph in a book, and that's it. They don't, they don't go deep there is, There's no going deep. How, and even you don't even need to go how, how deep. They just go a little deep. You don't have to spend the whole year studying about Down syndrome. It's basic. What can they do? What are the issues they have? Actually, with the technology we have, when, a, when a, a medical student is studying, YouTube is there. Put links to videos to show how people live, the actual lived experience of parents, of the people with Down syndrome themselves, because that will tell you in real life what is going on. The fact that my child had a heart surgery, that's an issue. But that my child is starting to read, is athletic, is intelligent, is lovely, that's another story. So the conversation needs to diversify. Yeah. And I hold the medical community um, responsible, to be honest. Well, Ujimai, uh, I'm going to ask you something. You know, if you look at the issue of um, this sickle cell anemia, at some time, I, I remember one time I was, I was finding that they said that uh, if they, when the woman is pregnant and they discover that the baby is going to be a sickler, SS, they are also going to terminate it. So how can you correlate both? And I'm not going to stand for any side because, like you said, everybody should decide, but you should make informed decision. Not that you'll be looking at it from one side. Mm -hmm. You decided that you want your baby and you are happy, your baby is great and mm -hmm. she's doing well. 
and she will achieve more. Yeah. Why some other women say, no, I can't deal with this. So it's, it's like, let it be that they have the whole information at their hand and make the decision. So what do you think about this issue for your hand? Are you good? Because in Nigerian situation, mm -hmm. we have issue of religion and cultural belief to deal with. Yeah. You know, religiously speaking, we don't support abortion. Yes. It's called, yeah, yeah maybe culturally yeah. too. Culturally too. So how do you yeah. manage the situation too? How do we, how do we reconcile both situations? Thank you, Liza. Really quite absolutely brilliant question. Put the, and look at, listen to everything that Tony has said. My son is six. I came to the UK, and at every left, right, and center, they're asking me, "Oh, um, didn't you find out you had Down syndrome when you were pregnant?" And I'm like, "How did I already want to that oh, that this guy is six? He's a beautiful, lovely boy. I adore him with all of my heart. How is that question relevant?" Remember, I said in my, my write-up that they don't approach children with autism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've had intense conversation with medical doctors in the UK on this matter. And I kept asking them, okay, fine. People with living on autism, why don't you abort the pregnancy? Hmm. Because they can't detect it in the tummy, in the womb. They can't detect it in the fetus when the baby still is still developing. Okay, oh, so let me ask you a question then. If you, can, if you can discover autism while the fetus is still forming, are you going to not tell us to start aborting the babies too? Uh, I can Are say you probably. Going to go ahead, probably. Start about simple cell Yep. I, so I really that, believe so that. that. Yeah. So if a baby was be born without a finger, you're going to abort the baby? Is that what you're telling me? So no. where, where where's the stop button basically? Yeah, yeah, if you exactly. start, what if you start, when when I, w nothing will be um out of out of choice. To yeah, what so extent? Genetic modification, so genetic engineering. Yeah. Because there's supposed to be a, a, a monsters. There's supposed to be with us. Otherwise, it's the most common mutation. Mm. One in every 800 babies. Imagine. So it's very common. 5.6 million of them. And you go to a country and you are educated them 100%. Not because they found the cure, because they are. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's a job. They're just literally. I, I, I think for the sake of sanity and progressive world. The, all stakeholders, when I mean stakeholders, I'm talking of scientists, medical personnel, medical scientists, and the government should come together and see how they can support people that have these, mm -hmm. mothers that have these challenges at birth, at the, and then after birth, how they can support these babies to grow to become useful persons in the world. So it feeds right into my sec segment, exactly what I was talking about as well. You know, it's about perception. So... If people were perceiving it in a more positive light, we would have less issues with aborting children with ab abnormalities. It becomes the norm, basically. It becomes the normal exactly. life. Exactly. Exactly. So, so it feeds. And, and um, Elijah, me, you, and, um, Elijah, you picked up on the religious aspect. I also hold religious institutions accountable with this because... You, yes, it's right to tell people, you know, abortion should not be the option. But there are instances where we'd agree maybe abortion should be considered. Yeah, but generally, abortion is not the option. But yet, in your churches, you're saying that this child is an, an abomination. You're saying that the child should fast. You're saying that the mother should, didn't do this, <laughs> that maybe she slept with the devil during her pregnancy zealous. or something. So, so there's, there's, there's all this madness that's going on. Or the, the, or the pastors selling... I, I told you recently, uh, I told someone recently of something that happened to me in January where a pastor told me he could eradicate the, 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 the Down syndrome from my daughter. Whoa. And I said to him... And he, the funny thing, he didn't say it out of spite or wickedness. He genuinely was trying to be nice. And I said to him, why would I remove my blessing? And he had no response for me. I said, why would I hmm. remove my blessing? So, and, and that's how it who looks. gives them the right to say something who, yes, like that? Yes, exactly. Just because you're worshipping in certain quarters. those religious without a proper yeah. understanding. All right. Definitely we will keep having this conversation. We will keep advocating. Up next is Abdul. Stay with us. <laughs> 